Well, good afternoon. My name is Chris Barkin, and I want to welcome all of you to the virtual William W. Hay Railroad Engineering Seminar. Before I introduce our speaker today, I'd like to remind listeners that you can ask questions using the question box on the side of your screen. One of the moderators of the seminar will read them to our speaker at an appropriate time. The William W. Hay Railroad Seminar Series is sponsored by the Rail Transportation and Engineering Center here at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. And on behalf of all of us, we thank AAR, BNSF, CN, Hanson Professional Services, and Union Pacific Railroad for their ongoing support of Railtech. It is greatly appreciated by those of us here on campus, as well as those participating via the internet. I also want to extend a welcome to the more than 230 people who registered for this seminar. They hail from seven different nations on four different continents. Wow. And the list of attendees includes freight and passenger railroads, transit organizations, federal and state DOTs, assuming I'm, assu I'm assuming some of uh, our speakers' colleagues today, uh, engineering firms, universities, research organizations, technology developers and suppliers, and others. We're very pleased that you could join us for this seminar. Those of you who wish to receive PDHs for your participation, please send us an email at payseminar at illinois.edu with your information as described in the email announcement for the seminar. And although this is our last Hay Seminar for the spring semester, I'm pleased to announce that we will continue them on a limited basis this summer. So stay, stay tuned for announcements of future Hay Seminars in the next month or two. The ability to precisely locate and track train movements is essential for a safe and efficient positive train control or PTC system. It involves obtaining and updating accurate, reliable information for the location of both the front and the back of the train. This must, must first occur at the initial, initial terminal and continue after the train is underway. If there are multiple tracks, the accuracy must be precise enough to resolve which track the train is on. Developing solutions uh, under the wide variety of railroad operating circumstances and conditions has proved to be a non-trivial problem. Consequently, FRA launched their positive train location research project, which will be the topic of today's presentation. Our speaker today is Sam Alibrahim. He is Chief of the Train Control and Communications Research Division at the Federal Railroad Administration. Mr. Alibrahim is, has principal responsibility for FRA's research on a variety of advanced train control technologies, including PTC, communication, automation, intelligent transportation systems, uh, connected automated vehicles, and grade crossing safety and trespass percent prevention. Mr. Alibrahim earned his, both his BS and MS degrees in electrical engineering and computer science engineering, as well as an MBA at the University of Louisville. He began his rail career in 1989 with Safe Tram Systems as a signal systems design engineer. He then went on to a position as Vice President of Engineering and Technology at ASAP Automation, a supply chain software, robotics, and distribution center management company. He then joined Booz Allen Hamilton as a rail transportation signal and train control expert, providing train control design and implementation strategies to transit clients throughout the world. In 2008, Mr. Earl Abraham joined FRA and assumed his current position. Mr. Earl Abraham is a registered professional engineer in four states, Kentucky, New York, Maryland, and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I'm very pleased to introduce Sam Ibrahim, who will present his seminar today entitled Positive Train Location, Supporting Next Generation Methods of Train Control and Operations. Mr. Ibrahim. Thank you, Chris, uh, and good afternoon. Um, I hope everybody can hear me okay. Uh, you're good? All right. Uh, so uh, first, um, I'd like to, uh, um, I have a, a quick plug for FRA Train Control and Communication research uh, division. Um, let's, uh, all right, so let me, okay, now I'm able to move the slides forward. So, so, we, so we have four research uh, focus areas, train control, intelligent transportation systems, um, grade crossing safety and trespass prevention, uh, modeling and, and simulation. Now, due to the, to the limited time that I have, I just want to highlight the research programs, and we're, we are happy to uh, present the research projects in these programs in future sessions. 
Uh, so under train control, of course, our biggest program is uh, positive train control or PTC um, research, which includes uh, positive train location, the subject uh, or PTL, the subject of, of this session. We also have a, a, a program um, for a next generation PTC, building on what we have developed so far in, in, the, in this technology for, for the years to come. Um, automated train operation research, uh, communication research, and uh, train control cyber security research. For the past six years, we have been collaborating with other DOT modes, namely uh, uh, FHWA, FTA, FMCSA, and uh, ITS-JPO, <clears throat> a lot of acronyms there, uh, focusing on connected uh, or automa and automated vehicle initiatives and integrating the, um, with, with other surface transportation modes and infrastructure. The uh, Great Crossing and Trespass Prevention Research aims obviously to, to reduce uh, accident and incidents at Great Crossing and uh, trespass at uh, uh, right of way. Um, and that's accomplished through the use of engineering, education and enforcement um, research in collaboration with uh, our sister research uh, uh, division, uh, Human Factors Division, that's, a, that's an uh, FRA uh, um, uh, research division, Volpe, academia, law enforcement, um, state and, and local DOTs and, and other stakeholders. And finally, the, uh, in the modeling and, and simulation area, we develop uh, tools to help state DOTs, railroads, and FRA to do operational and risk uh, modeling. All of that research and, and, and more than 2,200 uh, research uh, outcomes are documented and available for public viewing and, and download at our e-library. So please visit that site. There's a wealth of information there um, to, look, to uh, make use of. And so now with, uh, uh, with that, uh, uh, I suppose, shameless plug there. Um, uh, now we move on to, uh, to positive train location or PTL. So PTL is a train-based um, positioning and tracking technology. It uses global positioning satellite constellations and onboard inertial navigation sensors and software to accurately resolve um, head of a train or HOT and end of a train or EOT uh, locations in all operating environments, including G GPS challenged environments. And that's to address safety and operational uh, def uh, deficiencies resulting from inaccuracy of GPS. So PTL architecture includes um, HOT segment, that's in the head, the, the, head, uh, the lead locomotive, and end of uh, uh, train segment, EOT segment, that's integrated into the uh, end of a train device. And a 900 megahertz radio link between the two in a, in a master slave arrangement where the head of a train device is the master and the end of train device is a slave. A quick word about GPS system. So GPS system is, 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 is owned and operated by the US government. Uh, a, a lot of governments around the world, they have their own GPS uh, uh, or, or uh, satellite systems to, to do the same thing. Um, but in, in our case, uh, GPS has uh, 32 satellites, eight of which are spare and 24 are active at any given time. Uh, to ensure that at least four satellites are within the line, line of sight of any location on Earth at all times. So the more visibility mobile GPS navigation systems, including PTL and GPS that we have in our cars and, and, and others, um, the, uh, the more visibility it has to a satellite constellation, the higher the position accuracy will be. Um, this, this is an animation um, of, of um, 
the PTL simulation testing at the test transportation uh, um, transportation test center, I'm sorry, in Pueblo, Colorado. The, the blue arrows, I think you will see blue arrows there, I hope, and, and I hope you see the animation there, um, uh, show the number of visible satellite uh, to the uh, ACOT segment at any given time. So one would think having a, a line of sight visibility of four out of 24 satellites is, is an easily accomplished uh, task. Uh, oh, sorry, I need to ignore that. All right, uh, but that's not true. Moving through uh, um, canyons and, and uh, uh, urban canyons and tunnels and uh, etc. will reduce the visibility, resulting in um, uh, loss of position accuracy. So the next slide, with that background, and, and in the next slide, I, I will uh, I will talk about the motivation for for PTL. Uh, research and kind of frame the, 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 the problem that, that the railroads are facing. So uh, the motivation for PTL research is, is to improve safety and efficiency of train operations. And for that, modern train control uh, systems, including PTC, depend on the accuracy and confidence of the head of a train location the uh, accuracy and confidence of the end of train uh, location as well as the the train length uh, accuracy so currently the interoperable uh, train control implementation of ptc relies on gps uh, lo uh, location of um, uh, of the hot or, or the head of a train and, and that accuracy uh, determination is, is obviously comes with, with 15 um, uh, meter accuracy at 95% uh, confidence level. That's, that's not good enough. <laughs> uh, and and the, end, the end of a train location is derived from the uh, head of a train uh, location uh, uh, with crew entered train length which is a potential uh, opportunity for errors, as well as uh, uh, known switch positions. So, so the uncertainty of the satellite uh, position determination and the potential errors of, of uh, manual entry would, would limit the PTC safety benefits, uh, operational efficiency, and line capacity. I have a few examples on the impact of these uncertainties. I mean, so I have three panels here. The, the, the left panel on, on the slide shows uh, that with 15 meter accuracy, and that's the GPS accuracy at 95% confidence, uh, PTC really cannot positively identify which track the train is on in, in a multi-track uh, uh, areas. The circle shows the accuracy uh, of, of the GPS uh, system. The top panel shows again with the with, without have without knowing uh, the the uh, EOT position, PTS cannot positively determine that a train has has left the uh, uh, the main line and on and, and clear into uh, a siding. Uh, the, the bottom panel uh, shows a situation where, again, not, not having that accuracy in, in HOT and EOT uh, position, uh, uh, PTC really cannot determine which track uh, it, the train is, is occupying. So uh, GPC, uh, GPS accuracy can, can be improved, and it, it is improved with differential correction. And it is improved to from 15 meters at 95% uh, um, accuracy to to uh, um, or confidence to three meter uh, with 95% uh, confidence, and that's with the use of of SBAS, which is the satellite-based augmentation systems. This is a geo geostationary satellite constellation that constantly broadcast position correct uh, uh, position error correction information and as you can see from this example uh, train one and train two um, both uh, broadcasting potentially the same uh, um, 
or the, resolving the, this the, the same uh, location, even though they're on two different tracks. So for us, uh, GPS with differential correction is still insufficient to positively to positively resolve uh, track occupancy of trains. Put, putting it all together, and, and this graph is, is uh, or this this slide shows uh, kind of a summary of, of what we're talking about. And by the way, this this figure is drawn to uh, is drawn to scale using using 12 foot uh, track centers. So the outside circle shows the, the accuracy of GPS at 15 meters uh, accuracy and 95% uh, confidence. The smaller blue circle, darker circle, circle sorry, uh, shows GPS with differential correction, which is three meters at 95% uh, confidence. And PTL at a third of a meter at 95% confidence. A third of a meter, that's 12 inches. And, and so that's a, that's the accuracy that's needed for PTL to be to be successful in its in its mission. <clears throat> so um, with that level of accuracy, and 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 if PTL can achieve it, um, PTL can provide many benefits. And 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 this here's a, a list of some of the benefits. Uh, eliminate human errors uh, in, in manual entry, uh, otherwise known fat fingers, uh, of a train length and track selection at, uh, during in, uh, train initialization, uh, which is part of the departure uh, 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 procedure of, of, of train um, movement. Uh, positive train discrimination, uh, automatic uh, and, and safe release of train uh, movement authority uh, behind behind the train in dark territories, uh, positive determination of switch and, and block clearing, um, rear and uh, rear of a train protection when used when shunting cars, um, increased capacity through closer follow-up moves, uh, and support the implementation of, of moving block uh, uh, train operation, which is something that I'll get into later on in, in, in the discussion. So PTL development took place in two phases. Phase one started in 2011, went through to uh, concluded in 2012, and it started with a grant from the FRA to Railroad Research uh, Foundation to identify and evaluate um, improved location technologies and, and actually develop uh, a proof of concept PTL systems to meet uh, the standards uh, uh, or the requirements uh, sh shown here in the slide without an, an aid of external reference or satellite subscription service. And that's, that's very important uh, because it caused <laughs> one of the candidates uh, to, to, to lose the, uh, the competition. So the, I have here a, a partial list of the perf performance requirements. Uh, first, um, HOT, EOT uh, position error of less than or equal to 1.0 meter at 10 nines confidence level. That's 99 point and then eight nines after that uh, confidence level. Train velocity error of less than 0.1 uh, mile per hour at 99.99%. Uh, uh, train heading error of less than or equal to one degree at 95% uh, confidence level. And, and for, for PTL to accomplish that, PTL has to be, uh, must be capable of pr providing precision, uh, position uh, accuracy of less than 18 centimeters. That's about seven inches uh, and, uh, with one, uh, one standard deviation uh, along and across the track. Additional uh, functional requirements uh, are system availability of better than 99%, um, support the HOT, EOT communication for, for uh, freight trains up to five miles in length and passenger trains for up to 1,000 feet. Um, also track HOT and EOT positions with, with and without uh, uh, and maintain accuracy, of course, uh, with and without uh, GPS 
and maintain that accuracy for more for at least one hour uh, and of course uh, uh, be able to to monitor and report PTL uh, uh, health status to the onboard PTC system so all of that is, is a really a tall order <laughs> for, for, for PTL to accomplish. Now, uh, we, we formed an advisory group uh, for this research, and it was made up of uh, Class 1 railroads, um, Union Pacific, BNSF, Norfolk Southern, uh, uh, and CSX. It was also uh, FRA was a member, uh, uh, Volpe, um, uh, TTCI, and that group was, was really responsible for putting together the performance requirements and guided the, the, the research through. Now, um, two qualified contractors were chosen, uh, Boeing Aircraft uh, Company and SAIC, which is now uh, Lidos to develop the, uh, the um, proof of concept uh, PTL system and, and really uh, independently, of course, and, and compete for the right to continue on to phase two. So phase two started uh, um, in 2013 and lasted all the way through 2017. And it started with, a, with a, again, FRA R&D uh, awarding a task order contract to Lidos, the winner of, of, of the two uh, qualified contractors from phase one, uh, to expand the development of um, uh, the uh, proof of concept PTL system for, for integration and testing with an ITC compliant PTC onboard system in revenue service tracks. And so two major tasks were uh, to, to integrate uh, the PTL, um, the HOT segment hardware, into uh, an AR standard um, uh, application car cage chassis, which, which, you, which is what you see at the, at the top um, uh, photo there. And the, and the arrow points to that single card uh, which is what uh, uh, PTL HOT uh, is. Also, uh, integrate uh, PTL EOT hardware with sensors and, and, and everything uh, with, the, uh, with the standard uh, end of train device, which is what you see uh, in, the, in that little, uh, uh, the bottom uh, uh, picture. And of course, as I mentioned, the, the advisor group uh, saw the, this whole research from start to, to, to finish. And, uh, uh, and thankfully, the, the, the railroad members of the advisor group were the ones uh, who uh, provided or supported the, the revenue service uh, testing, which I'm going to talk about uh, later. Um, I have a couple of uh, slides here and pictures of, of the phase one testing at the transportation test center uh, in Pueblo. And it shows uh, on the left-hand side, the, the, uh, uh, the, the, locom the top of the locomotive with this, with this uh, antenna farm of, of various antennas, uh, GPS antennas, radio antennas, reference antennas, and so on. Uh, the the left-hand side shows the, the end of uh, train hardware and, and of course, uh, we, we were using a, a, a passenger car here for, for, for that uh, uh, hardware um, mounting uh, and, and uh, on, on the roof of that, uh, of that car. And we also used a, a flatbed truck uh, rail car uh, for, for the same purposes, which uh, for the proof of concept, it, it was good, but, but later on you'll see that, that the uh, 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 part of the issues that was uh, that that we faced later on is 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 really the the um, the requirement for the EOT device to be integrated uh, with the end of uh, end of train uh, device uh, and, and but I'll, I'll talk about that uh, later because it really gave us a lot of trouble. <laughs> 
And so, um, the, uh, from an evolution standpoint, you know, the, the evolution of, of the PTL hardware, uh, uh, this slide shows you what uh, phase one, the proof of concept in, in a breadboard uh, a hardware type, which was really um, a big box, um, kind of similar to the old 80s IBM PC uh, for the folks who, 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 uh, who are old enough to, to, to remember uh, uh, the, these PCs. Uh, on the right-hand side shows um, the phase two um, uh, integrated uh, um, HOT, uh, card uh, that's a, that's 10 inches by probably an inch and a half thick. So all the sensors, all the the microprocessor, and and and, uh, and everything is 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 in that in that little card. Um, and and it took it took us to um, what they call board spins. In other words, uh, as as we were going through testing and 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 changing. Um, updating firmware, uh, changing uh, uh, components, uh, and, and updating components on, on the card. It took uh, the redesign of, of the of the um, of the card twice. Um, so uh, um, the other little picture shows uh, the, the basically the same hardware, the same sensor package, and and uh, microprocessor and circuitry being housed in a ruggedized uh, housing that can fit inside the um, end of train device. And, and this picture hopefully kind of explain what I've been talking about in terms of uh, the HOT hardware now sits in, in a single slot in the head locomotive uh, um, where the, uh, uh, the ACC chassis uh, uh, is, is is located and through that chassis, the uh, um, HOT PTL hardware can communicate with the onboard PTC and, and, and other systems. Um, of course, the antenna on top of the, the uh, um, uh, locomotive, as well as on the right hand side, it shows uh, uh, the integrated EOT hardware into the end of a train device um, in the back of the train. So uh, I'll talk a little bit about the PTL testing, and, and, and we really had a, a rigorous test, uh, amount of testing of PTL functionality, um, uh, hardware, software, uh, as well as environmental testing with thermal and shock and, and, and vibration. Um, and, and we used three different trains to do that, uh, to do that testing at, at uh, TTC. Um, Exercising the uh, HOT uh, hardware, uh, EOT, and, and the 900 megahertz radio link uh, in, in between, which ended up uh, having to do a, a lot of uh, 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 algorithm refinement and, and, uh, and uh, even you know circuitry uh, uh, modifications. The table shows uh, nine uh, test procedures. Uh, to test PTL performance under a variety of operating uh, conditions. Static operations, which is uh, really defined by uh, train initializations, and variable speed operations, well, that's constant speed, low speed, high speed, accelerating, decelerating, uh, switching operations for, for coupling and decoupling maneuvers, uh, and radio communications, uh, kind of uh, exercising failures, multi-path conditions, antenna blockages, and, 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 and the like. Uh, uh, and also GPS uh, uh, denied conditions, uh, that's to simulate, you know, going through tunnels, overpass, and, and, and extending uh, outage of GPS uh, presence. The, the field testing, on, on the other hand, uh, was really done uh, for us by uh, uh, Railroad's uh, AG uh, members, and that's uh, BNSF, uh, UP, Norfolk Southern, and CSX. And they did perform these tests on uh, over thousands of miles and, and millions of data uh, samples were collected over a variety of terrains. Um, uh, BNSF uh, used uh, our test route was more than 6,000 miles between California and Texas, and also between Missouri and Texas. 
and it and and again it it, it was composed of uh, city, uh, mountain, and plain territories. Norfolk Southern also tested <coughs> route tests included uh, 105 mile Roanoke to um, Bellevue uh, Creek. Um, which was characterized predominantly by uh, forest and, and foliage and hills. Um, uh, also another route, uh, which uh, I, I show it at the bottom of, of, the, uh, of the slide there from um, Elmore, West Virginia to Norfolk, Virginia, using 1.6 mile long uh, coal train. This is a little bit of a, a busy slide, but this is really where the action is. Uh, uh, so this is the, the PTL test results. Before I, before I dig deep into it, uh, um, I just want to say that PTL system mostly met uh, or, or exceeded the performance requirements set forth by, by, by the AG. But it also revealed some issues uh, that uh, need to be addressed and, 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 and we have continuing research to, to, to deal with that. So the top table uh, shows um, the so-called ideal configuration. Uh, so what is the ideal configuration? That's typically the, 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 the tests that were conducted in phase one. And the ideal conditions were, uh, like, like, like the name says, ideal, as in uh, HOT and EOT has, has full exposure to satellite constellations. Um, and also the train has uh, uh, available uh, track database on board that is a, a well uh, uh, defined track uh, center line track i'm sorry so um so so the track is 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 is, is well uh, um, uh, identified with, within uh, with the the onboard database which that's not always the case in real life <clears throat> Uh, strong communication between uh, a radio link between uh, um, HOT and, and, and EOT. Uh, so, so with this kind of configuration, we got results that were very impressive. Uh, I'll start with uh, HOT, uh, and by the way, that 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 horizontal double-headed arrow means a cross track. I was just trying to minimize the amount of text in that in that slide. So a cross track HOT uh, accuracy was 0.15 uh, meter and with one standard deviation at a, at a confidence level of 12 nines, which actually uh, beats the, the, the specific initial specification, PTL specification for with um, 0.18 meter, uh, one standard deviation uh, and confidence of 10 nines. Um, the HOT again uh, in the um, uh, along the track precision or, or accuracy of 0.18, uh, one standard deviation, one sigma, with 10 nines uh, confidence, uh, um, which matches the the, the PTL uh, um, specification. Now uh, the H the EOT uh, actually beat across track with uh, 0.11 meter. Um, accuracy and 15 nines um, and EOT along track accuracy of 0.7 uh, meter uh, with uh, five nines, which by the way is, is below uh, or, or did not exactly meet the PTL uh, specification, but the AG have determined that um, 0 0.04, 0 0.06 difference between the spec and, and, and what EOT was able to produce did not really uh, 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 pose any, any, any problem in, in, the, in the, uh, the, the safety of, of uh, PTL deployment in terms of uh, track discrimination and, and, and the issues that we, you know, the, the benefits that we talked about earlier. <clears throat> So um, phase two, uh, revenue service was uh, under less than ideal conditions. And again, uh, what is less than ideal conditions? Well, first, the 900 megahertz radio link was spotty at time due to antenna position and signal and signal interference. Uh, we, we've, we saw high uh, bid error rate for longer trains. 
And also when we switched from nine mega, 900 megahertz uh, frequency, center frequency to something lower like the 220 megahertz or the 450 megahertz, <clears throat> we, uh, we experienced better performance but uh, those uh, those frequencies, the 220 and 4, 450, also uh, were limited in, in its in its bandwidth. So the amount of data that can be exchanged uh, is also uh, limited that way. Um, the the rearmost car uh, rail car um, uh, constellation masking. So so as you saw from the the, the, the previous pictures. When we integrated, and, and that turned out to be really uh, uh, the, the, the major um, uh, contributing factor to 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 the, the EOT uh, um, uh, performance, or uh, uh, as, you know, or not meeting the the, the specifications. <clears throat> So, so the rear of of of, uh, uh, of the rail car uh, obscured. Uh, on average, half of the uh, uh, the satellites available, uh, and, and of course, when you reduce the number of uh, satellite or, or, or line of sight exposure to the satellite, you're going to have uh, you're going to diminish the position accuracy. It also uh, 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 played uh, uh, really a, a destructive role here in in uh, in. Uh, in obscuring the the communication uh, antennas, uh, that's the radio communication between the HOT and and the EOT, and and so the, the signal attenuated uh, sharply, which resulted in the in the um, uh, the error uh, the errors in uh, and the spottiness of, of of the communication. So so with that definition of the real world uh, uh, less than ideal configuration. The, uh, you could see from the table in, uh, in the bottom that HOT uh, across track and 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 along uh, track still performed very well with respect to the specification uh, uh, accuracy and confidence uh, of the uh, uh, that put out that was put out by AG, but we really had a problem with the uh, the EOT uh, segment not performing. Uh, in, in, in accuracy and in, in, in confidence. Um, but I'll, I'll get to solutions to that uh, later on. <laughs> um, so uh, with respect to the PTL vol velocity and heading performance, PTL did a great job uh, and, and met and, and actually beat the, uh, the specification uh, in, in, in accuracy and confidence. And that's mainly because, uh, really, due to the performance of the uh, HOT segment, and 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 because the uh, the velocity and the heading were, were calculated and, and, and derived from from that. Now, with respect to the PTL uh, range requirements, uh, to remember earlier, uh, there was a requirement to that, that PTL has to support HOT EOT communication for trains, uh, uh, freight trains. Uh, up to five, five miles long and, and, and passenger trains up to 1,000 feet. The field testing revealed that the use of the 900 megahertz frequency radio uh, to, to establish that communication was simply in, insufficient to accommodate that, that range for, uh, for two reasons. Again, the integration of the um, end of train segment into the end of train device with the with the rear car masking of, <laughs> uh, um, but also uh, uh, 900 megahertz band uh, ex exhibit a significant fall after 0.8 miles naturally. I mean that's just part of the 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 uh, the, uh, the, the the physics of of, of that uh, frequency. So. Uh, and of course, it's not the end of the world. We, we have different ways of, of trying to, to, to improve on, on the performance of, of the, uh, the EOT segment. Uh, obviously, going to the lower frequencies, the 160, 220, and the 450 megahertz, it gave us a, a better performance in the extended range. But like I said earlier, they were limited in bandwidth. Um, 
also uh, using a wideband software defined radio this is a, a, a special radio it's a smart radio that can can communicate on multiple frequencies and which by the way FRIR and D has developed that and, uh, and I'll be happy to talk about that or, or, or one of my uh, members of my team can talk about that in, in, in future sessions but this this smart radio can can also uh, um, uh, use its capability of, of uh, diversity combining uh, uh, which is really a, a, it's a it's a um, it's a fancy term for for being able to reconstruct the message from bits and pieces from other uh, 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 messages that are in incomplete messages and um, and being able to to operate on on, on multi frequency so so that can 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 help with the with the, with the performance of uh, of the um, uh, EOT. Um, so um, uh, for us, it, it, it's always, you know, uh, it's very important. It's an important measure that uh, um, the, the, our success in, 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 uh, in R&D and uh, in, in developing new technology is really railroad adoption and implementation of these technologies that, 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 we, uh, uh, that we help uh, uh, produce. Uh, or develop. Uh, so uh, recently, I learned that that Waptec uh, uh, started manufacturing uh, a new line uh, of what they call um, uh, GoLink uh, platform and precision reference, which is really uh, uh, based on, on 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 that research. And and so we're, we're very proud to, to 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 see that happening. And many uh, railroads are are uh, acquiring these these devices. And, and actually deploy them in, in operation uh, currently. <clears throat> so uh, we're not done with this with this issue. Obviously, we, we we're continuing the next generation, uh, 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 the development of the next generation of EOT and, and uh, HOT and EOT uh, to improve its performance and, and especially EOT. But we also have additional goals. Uh, related to to safety, uh, um, the, uh, there there is uh, there is a p potential application here for for uh, end of train uh, device initiated uh, emergency brake application. Uh, that that's something uh, we're looking we're looking at. Um, also, uh, uh, having EOT uh, uh, pro provide protection for reverse moves. Um, also, uh, enabling emerging uh, uh, methods of, of operations and train control, and, and that's quasi-moving block, full moving block, uh, uh, remote control locomotive or road RCL, uh, and, and, and also, of course, uh, automated train operation. Uh, another goal is to improve the communication between the uh, HOT and EOT devices, authentication, address authentications, um, and um, uh, we, uh, in addition to that, is, is, is meeting some, some uh, uh, operational uh, uh, requirements like a low power consumption and uh, one person uh, lift and carry. Uh, that's also important for, for our uh, uh, roadway workers in handling uh, the hardware. Um, so uh, you know, the, the, the put it, putting it uh, all in, uh, together on, on, on slide in terms of uh, defining the role of PTO uh, in in, um, in in supporting uh, um, uh, and enabling uh, new uh, train control technology. You could you could see the relationship between these technologies and and how PTL is is improves uh, PTC. Uh, uh, systems and and and, and also enables uh, um, able able to uh, well enables uh, um, full moving block quasi moving block and, and road RCL all the way up to to uh, automated train operations um, one one of the impacts that I thought to, to highlight a little bit is is uh, Really, the impact on uh, PTL's impact on on capacity, uh, rail capacity improvement. Uh, here, I have two 
uh, two panels. The top panel uh, shows the a simple in a simplified way uh, a fixed block signaling system that is uh, 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 currently being being uh, used, uh, and uh, it shows, of course, that um, uh, uh, the um, First of all, no two trains can occupy the same block, and there's always at least one or more uh, empty blocks in between uh, trains or, or, or between uh, or following trains. And you see th th that these are huge distances uh, uh, combined, by the way, with, with what, what used to be, which we have improved on, uh, very conservative braking uh, uh, systems, but now with, with, the, uh, with the help of the uh, adaptive braking algorithm that we, again, of RIR and D has developed and deployed by the railroads, uh, make the, the uh, um, uh, moving block uh, concept possible. And by the way, this is just a concept. It is still on the drawing board. It has not been approved by uh, FRA uh, Office of Safety uh, uh, yet. So, so, so that's still in, in, in the concept uh, stage. But as you can see from the banner, uh, bottom, bottom panel, um, the, uh, the, the, um, with PTL and, and the uh, movement authorities can be, uh, can be established to the, to the rear end of the, uh, the, 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 the the train ahead, if you will, with a, with a with a bit of margin, which shrinks the distance between uh, between trains, increasing the capacity of uh, um, of the track. Uh, and so um, uh, there are some track capacity calculations uh, uh, based on uh, the the moving block uh, concept that it could increase. Um, um, uh, capacity, uh, track capacity up to 75% while maintaining safety. And uh, again, you could you could see uh, if, uh, in comparing the two panels, the, the lack of wayside hardware that that is eliminated or, or, or the hardware that is eliminated using uh, uh, full moving block or virtual block. That's another uh, concept uh, kind of a similar. So that's one of the one of PTL's imp, uh, uh, impact on on future uh, and uh, train control and, and, and train operation uh, potential. I leave you with one. Uh, I, I don't know uh, how, how I'm doing, but I think I'm doing all right on, on time. But I leave you with this futuristic operation concept. This is the flexible operator uh, operator location system. Uh, uh, again, it is, uh, it is, it's based on the, the, the predator um, uh, drone, uh, but, but that concept will only be possible with uh, a PTL, uh, P, uh, with the precision that PTL technology uh, uh, can make uh, uh, available uh, for, for this type of uh, train control and operation uh, um, concept to, to be a reality. And with that, I thank you for your attention and I will be, um, I'll be happy to, to answer any questions. Well, thank you, Sam. Excellent seminar as expected. Uh, really appreciate you I uh, presenting it today and not not surprising we have a quite a number of questions so if you have a few more minutes we'll absolutely like go through those I hope I can answer them okay. all right first one's not is actually not technical it's an employment question <laughs> oh, okay are there any open are there any open positions in train control and communications uh, at, at FRA, I assume, and if so, would they be open to Canadian citizens? Oh uh, well, uh, I, I know it's, it's it's the best place to work, and, and especially in, in, in my division. Uh, maybe I'm a, a little biased, but but that's the fact. Uh, we we just, we're actually in the process right now of filling one position, uh, but potentially we, we'll have uh, open positions in the future. I'm not so sure uh, unless the Canadian. Uh, um, 
who's applying for this position is also a U.S. citizen, because I think any federal position uh, has a requirement of, of U.S. citizenship. Um, but uh, um, but with the with the the new um, uh, infrastructure bill that uh, the president President Biden is 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 is, is hoping to, to implement, there's definitely a, a lot more um, uh, work that, that can be done uh, in rail. And I'm sure, as everybody knows, he's a, he's a big fan of, of rail transportation, both uh, um, passenger and, and freight. So, so we'll be hiring in, in, in the future, um, I expect. Okay. Next question is, um, with deployment of PTL, what could be the minimum headway possible in the case of high-speed trains? Uh, well, uh, yeah, that, that's a hard question to just give you a, a, a standard answer, but, but the, the, the breaking curve of, uh, um, uh, of the train uh, is calculated every second. And, and so, uh, uh, and, that's, and it's maintained um, by, by the following train. Um, so it really uh, it, it depends on on you know the the, the type of train the uh, the uh, the, um, uh, the braking profile of the train uh, the 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 actual terrain the actual uh, um, um, track uh, uh, conditions and, and and so on so there's there are quite few variables to determine uh, to determine that but but. Uh, rest assured that this this will be a, the uh, a safe breaking distance with with a small uh, margin of safety added to that. But I really couldn't give you a, a specific number. Okay. Uh, next question is actually an amalgamation of two of them. Um, what solution do you use or recommend for tunnels, subways, or other areas where GPS is either unavailable or degraded? Well, I mean that's that's one of the um, that's one of the requirements that we wanted to to get PTL to be uh, 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 to accomplish, and that is even with the absence of GPS uh, for up to one hour to maintain accuracy of of tracking of the head end and 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 the and the end of a train. Uh, but typically, uh, I've, I've worked on CBTC uh, systems before in, 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 in tunnels. Uh, leaky feeders uh, uh, is, is, a, is one way of, of uh, bringing in signal into the uh, um, uh, into the tunnels. Um, uh, also, um, um, the tachometers, special kind of tachometers that that that, that are accurate and and. Uh, uh, to, to keep uh, um, to to measure you know distances and and, and keep the uh, the accuracy uh, as as good as possible. But but all of that will will really even with with what we're doing with PTL after after a while. And we tested that. And I did not get into those details because of the limited time I had. Uh, is uh, as uh, the longer tunnels, you, you will have a drift factor there and, and you will lose accuracy uh, in, in, in very long uh, denied areas, whether it's tunnels or, or, or mountainous areas. Okay. Next question is, why is PTL limited to uh, 1,000 feet or less for passenger trains? This restricts train length to no more than 10 coaches, assuming a single locomotive. Um, well, and that isn't that typical of, of I mean, uh, you know, uh, pass, <laughs> you know, station platforms are are no more than um, 800 feet, maybe. Uh, is that I, I think, you know, I, I I'll I'll get back to to the <laughs> to the AG uh, 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 for that question precisely. But I thought um, typical uh, train lengths of passenger trains are is, is no more than a thousand feet. Yeah, I, I, uh, one special case I'll offer that's definitely longer is the auto train. Um, oh, uh, but um, and I'm, you know, and certainly in the past there were passenger trains longer than ten cars. I guess I'm not sure about Amtrak regular Amtrak service these days. There may be some others on the line that can speak to that. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Um, 
Were millimeter wave spectrums tested and will all train location data be centralized to the FRA? I'm sorry, say, uh, ask that question again, please. Well, it's written, were, were MM wave spectrums tested? I assume that means millimeter wave spectrums tested and will all train location data be centralized to the FRA? I would not uh, expect that. As far as, uh, I'm, I'm not understanding that, but, but as far as the, uh, and I'm not sure if the uh, uh, millimeter uh, wavelength uh, uh, of frequencies have, have been t tested. Um, again, I, I have to go dig uh, in, into that. But as far as the, uh, was the, the question was about the data uh, centralized to the FRA, uh, what does that imply? Uh, uh, I, I'm pretty sure I can answer the question that it won't be, but... Um, it's, it's, uh, yeah, all our research is publicly funded research, so it's all, uh, all is available uh, uh, to, the, to, the, to the general public. Uh, yeah, I think he's asking about, the, this individual is asking about the train location data. I would not expect that to be, that's going to be oh, going to the railroads themselves. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a railroad specific data, and, and, and uh, no, we're, right. we're not, we're not going to have that. All right, another question, and we've got a lot of questions. We may or may not be able to get to all of them, but and if we can't, we'll obviously put you in touch with the individuals. Um, if rail cars on a train are set out or picked up en route, once a train has departed the initial terminal, what does the train crew have to do to assure the accuracy of the new train length and proper HOT, EOT communications? I know this has been a subject for quite some time. Uh, well, these are these are procedures that the railroads uh, follow, and 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 uh, you know I'm I'm not I'm not uh, expert on 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 that part of it. Uh, the the reinitialization of the communication uh, between the HOT and EOT that 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 happens uh, has to happen, but I think there is some uh, a specific a railroad specific procedure that. Uh, um, that roadway uh, workers have to have to follow, and and, um, and I don't have the information or or, or or very knowledgeable about these individual uh, procedures. Okay. But as far as the equipment, it will reinitialize, you know, re re uh, connect and and communicate with each other, and they reestablish the new positions, and uh, uh, and that happens automatically. Okay. Next question is, there are now four GNSS systems in operation, GPS in the US and NATO, Galileo in the EU, mm -hmm. GLONASS in Russia and Baidu in China. Mm -hmm. Have you tested any of the accuracies available when using signals from two, three, or all four of these systems? Uh, well, we had a, a GNSS receiver on, on board the uh, um, the HOTs, uh, well, both uh, HOT and EOT segments. So I, I assume they they will communicate with any of these constellations that are that that are available. Okay. And I'm going to kind of go through these relatively quickly because there are so many. I'd like to get to as many as we can. Um, is the eventual goal to eliminate the need for track circuits for train detection? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the whole grail, of course, uh, now, and we're working, we have some other research in, in, in this area, um, but at, until we resolve um, uh, rail integrity or broken rail detection uh, in, 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 some fa in some way other than track circuit, the tra track circuit is, is going to be uh, is going to be here. Is going to be with us in different forms. You know, they they will not be used for for train tracking and and train detection, but rather just really uh, to uh, establish uh, rail integrity and, and and broken rail detection. Right. Uh, next question is: Where does the seventy five percent extra capacity appear from? Um, you know, when I put that in, I thought. Uh, uh, I, I might have to uh, re-engineer the 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 the, uh, the calculations <laughs> for for that number, but I didn't. Again, uh, I, that's a valid question. I, I don't have the math behind it, uh, but but really it, it was uh, um, 
our contractors did the the the, the, the calculations and I just cited that um, if, if you would uh, Chris it's, it's, send me the, the contact information of the person uh, or maybe I can when I find that calculations I could put that out uh, you know on your website or, or however I can uh, I can do it so actually, let me go back to the question that came up before about the passenger trains being more than a thousand feet long. A couple of people have commented. Uh, one person from Amtrak has said that um, some of the long distance consists on Amtrak routinely uh, have consists of more than 10 cars. Um, apparently, uh, Boston to Providence commuter trains uh, may soon exceed 10 cars. Um, of course, Toronto already has much longer, but that's Canada, so that's a different nation. Um, I guess the the over there seem to be people recommending that FRA look into a system that works for more than a thousand feet on passenger trains. Mm -hmm. because well and, and and really the platform is the same you know between freight and 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 and, and, and passengers so i think that the, the more than a thousand feet is doable if we're going after a five mile up to five mile long freight train <laughs> so so i i think that's that's not a, a big obstacle to 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 cross okay um could you speak about the inu technology being used to determine location when gnss is unavailable or impaired it's related to a previous question of course but i'm sorry what uh, say that again what what is the IN, inu technology being used to determine location when gnss is unavailable or impaired oh uh, is that uh... That speaks to the inertial navigation um, unit. Um, well, INU, I'm not sure what that stands for, but. I, I'm, I'm not sure what that stands for either. But, okay. but in general, when, when, when GPS is, is, is not available, we have the, uh, the onboard uh, um, um, electronics and, and the um, uh, gyros and and uh, um, uh, and such uh, to maintain uh, uh, tracking of 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 the position. So uh, that, that's that's the the benefit of um, uh, of PTL is is it, it can it can continue uh, precision tracking um, without with the loss of of the GPS signal. But that cannot go for for a long period of time because you're going to have drift and you're going to have errors introduced in in, in in the tracking. Yeah. Okay. The question clarified that they're referring to inertial navigation. So. Yes, and and that's the additional hardware that we. Uh, it's a it's a stack of um, if I can find it. Um, let me see. Um, I might not be able to. I had a slide, kind of one of the support slides, but but it's a stack of of uh, of, of uh, uh, micro electromechanical uh, uh, machines, which is uh, you know uh, gyros and and uh, um, uh, and sensors that 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 are with with such precision uh, uh, that they can uh, uh, maintain accuracy of of uh, tracking accuracy. Uh, for um, for an extended period of time. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen so many questions for a seminar. Well, um, what happened well, to differential? Good. What happened to differential corrections, broad based locally from PTC antennas? This comes from a former colleague. Um, which, oh, you, you're talking about uh, NDGPS? Well, uh, what happened? Yeah, I guess yeah, differential well, corrections broadband. Yeah, it's, it, yes, yes, yes. We, we had that and we actually have a, have a, a tower there at, at TTC um, uh, with that equipment, but the support for NDGPS kind of uh, dwindled and, and uh, um, we, uh, we we moved on uh, from that. It, it was I think 
and this has been a, a long time, it was maintained and, and supported by um, the Coast Guard. And then there was um, uh, a shift from that, from that, technolo from that technology, I believe. It's, it's been a few, quite a few years, so I, I don't remember. And, 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 and due, uh, due to that, we, we stopped updating the, uh, um, uh, uh, that, that uh, site. Uh, and also, uh, in, in addition to that, you know, the, the fact that the PTL requirement uh, stated that, that PTL has to maintain accuracy without the use of, of uh, um, uh, without the use, I'm getting some messages here on the site, so <laughs> without the use of uh, external uh, uh, or additional terrestrial uh, uh, references and, and, and uh, augmentation. So, but anyway, so so that the NDGPS support was 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 uh, the window, and and I, I think maybe just the Ag Department of Agriculture is the only one that that is still. Uh, <clears throat> okay, I'll I'll just do a few more questions because, as I said, there's at least twenty more. <laughs> we'll put you in touch with the people that are asking questions. Um, Next one is how far out in the future before full moving block is allowed and technically feasible? Um, I mean, I, I, I hate to predict and I don't want to predict, but but it's really the uh, um, it, it's it's within the, this decade easily. It, it, you know, um, the technology is there and 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 the. Uh, um, we can make it happen, and uh, if they make a, a, a good safety case for the Office of Safety at the FRA, uh, I'm sure I don't want to speak for them, but but uh, but uh, I'm sure the Office of Safety will be supportive. Okay, um, what speeds were used for each type of train during testing? Oh, uh, from of course, zero speed uh, during initialization to, um, uh, I think, even higher than 100 miles an hour. But that's only, obviously, at, at TTC. So for the people who are interested in ultra high speed, no, we did not test 220 miles an hour. Um. How is human error reduced in regards to train consists? Well, because the train length is is, is automatically calculated uh, after initialization. So as opposed to, uh, you know, you have to go to the MIS system uh, and, and enter that number, uh, which is really based on approximation of, of each car length and the number of cars that are in the train. And uh, uh, all of that uh, potential uh, uh, erroneous in, uh, input is eliminated by automatically calculating the, the, uh, the train length. Okay. Will the PTL information be potentially shared with grade crossing signal control system to improve safety for connected vehicles? Uh, why not? I mean, uh, <laughs> I don't see. I don't see why not. Uh, th there are other issues with connected vehicles interaction with the with the rail any rail system, uh, and and we're working through that. But uh, you know, indirectly, definitely, they you, you know, connected vehicle can can, can have uh, um, access um, to that to that information. Um, we'll just take a couple more here. Um, how susceptible is this system to failure with the loss of individual components? Well, uh, you know, we 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 did um, um, uh, our study on based on mean time between failures of fifty thousand op uh, operation hours of operation uh, and, and that's uh, that's what we that's what's been used uh, the the units that have been manufactured and, and out in the in, um, in the real world right now we're, we're collecting data on them and and obviously the 
the uh, we're going to have a, a better uh, handle on on that. But fifty thousand hours of operation is the mean times between failure. Okay, in regions with high throughput, would the track wayside equipment inspection frequencies be impacted given the shortened periods between successive trains? And if so, what would be some workarounds? Well, uh, with the, um, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't really know how to answer that question, uh, but just to say that obviously uh, roadway uh, worker protection is, 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 is a focus uh, uh, of ours and we have built uh, uh, what uh, the uh, um, EIC PRT uh, technology, which is employee in charge uh, uh, portable terminal. This is the only uh, worker protection uh, uh, electronic device that is uh, enforceable by B PTC. It's, it's the uh, it's the uh, the only uh, uh, system out here, or uh, it's not turned on yet. There are a couple of uh, uh, pieces left to 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 do in, in terms of software, but that system will will uh, uh, will control the train movement uh, uh, through um, work zones, and so there is a there is a, a, a big level of protection. Uh, there, with uh, with it being enforceable by PTC, uh, so that's one thing, you know. Uh, um, and of course, uh, railroad specific procedures, practices, and procedures will will, will have to be uh, updated and and, uh, uh, and and enforced. Okay, I think um, we'll conclude with a classic question of, from an American railroader. How much is it going to cost to equip a locomotive with this system? Uh huh. That's always the case, isn't it? Uh, yep. that, that, that's always an important question. And, and frankly, uh, the, the 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 need for the next generation research is 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 really to uh, to address potentially address this issue because to put the 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 more expensive hardware. Uh, especially in the EOT, to, to raise its performance it makes it uh, un unpalatable, frankly, to, to, uh, <laughs> to, to the railroads. So, so we are working on the specification for the, uh, the next generation EOT uh, to, to see is there a need for that, for that level of precision uh, for PTL to do its job safely. Uh, so, so between that and 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 of course, with mass adoption of this technology, the unit price will definitely uh, be reduced drastically. But as far as numbers, uh, you know, prices, I, I really don't have them. But I know they were um, they were high in in the in the in the low scale production, of course, and they were also high with respect to uh, the the uh, the precision needed for uh, EOT to, to operate in. So by reducing that, we can, we can reduce the, the unit cost. Thank you very much, Sam. We really appreciate you taking time on a Friday afternoon to talk to not only the people here on campus, but literally people throughout the country and around the world. Obviously a very important subject, uh, quite timely as uh, to uh, not only North America, but other nations uh, get various forms of PTC systems in place and functioning. And so we really appreciate you taking the time to share your knowledge and insights about how uh, the FRA is helping solve some of these problems. Well, th so, thank you all and, 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 and for, for, for giving, in, giving me the time to talk about this topic. But again, I refer you to, to our uh, e-library website. There is a wealth of information on, on not just this research, but a whole host of research from my division and, and my sister, sister divisions that we have in the Office of Safety and the Office of R&D. Thank you all. Okay. Well, best wishes for a wonderful weekend. And um, again, a reminder to everybody, we'll have uh, at least two more Hay seminars coming up later in May and in early June. So stay tuned. And uh, again, have a great weekend, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.